Hello, everyone. My name is Peter Xu. Uh, I, I came from Red Hat. Today, I'm going to talk about KVM 30 page tracking. So, what is 30 tracking? It is the method to track gas memory changes for different reasons. And uh, per my understanding, there are actually two types of 30 tracking. The first one is synchronous, which means the tracee, or say the guest, uh, needs to be blocked during the process. Uh, for example, the shadow page table tracking or VM live snapshot. Uh, the other one is uh, more commonly known uh, because of migration, and uh, that is the asynchronous page tracking. In which case, we don't really stop, need to stop the virtual machine or the vCPU as the tracee. Uh, instead, we need to report dirty information afterwards uh, using some of the interfaces provided. So I will talk uh, slightly more on migration in this talk. But before going into that, I really like to um, mention, still mention the synchronous dirty tracking that we used in either QMU or KVM because uh, they can be overlooked uh, because uh, they are not uh, as popular as migration. And, uh, but uh, I still think they are very interesting to know and uh, um, it plays a role there. For example, the KVM guest page table tracking. It is only used by shadow paging. So uh, TDP is not uh, needed uh, on that. What it was used to do is to track the guest page table pages and uh, we want to make sure the shadow page table, which is a one-one -one mapping of the guest page table, uh, could be always synchronized, synchronized with uh, the guest one. So we need to invalidate the shadow page table uh, synchronously when we detect that uh, the guest page table changed. It's an KBM internal interface. Um, it's actually, there is actually an interface inside of the kernel, so the kernel drivers can use it but it's not exposed to uh, user space. Um, so the next uh, example is a VM live snapshot. Uh, that is uh, when we want to take a snapshot of the guest devices or an including memory, of course, at a single point of time. It is based on user foot FD write protection so far, so it only supports anonymous memories. And uh, because uh, we don't really have uh, KBM interface for synchronous tracking. We need to use uh, the common MM in, uh, interfaces like user for FD. It looks really like a sim uh, uh, to migration, but uh, it actually tracks 30 pages synchronously and uh, it actually samples uh, the guest memory state at the start of the process rather than at the end. While migration is actually storing the uh, page status as at the end of migration. So uh, they really look similar, but they are really different. And uh, for asynchronous dirty tracking is mostly all about migration. And uh, for that, we actually have two steps to achieve it. Firstly, we need to trap it. And that's what we also do for synchronous dirty tracking as well. We, uh, there are two ways to do that. Red protection is the most commonly one. And PMR is only uh, applicable to asynchronous dirty tracking like migration because uh, it doesn't even need to interrupt the guest of uh, vCPU from execution and is very efficient. So uh, this allows us to trap um, when the pages were written. On the reporting side, we have uh, two interfaces so far in KVM. Uh, the first one is the long-standing lo uh, dirty log. And actually, uh, there is also the new clear log interface uh, that I would say is also part of the dirty log so far, which is per VM bitmap-based solution uh, interface. Dirty ring is just added to Linux uh, in the past year and is a per vCPU ring-based solution. And there is, uh, it's discussable that uh, a dirty ring can also use uh, the clear interface. Um, there is some trade-off, like uh, we can have more efficient uh, um, uh, 
re-protect the mechanism, but in uh, the meantime, there will be some more TLB flashes. Uh, so uh, maybe it will suit different needs. But in this talk, I, I, I didn't plan to go uh, deep into that. So next, I would like to uh, share some of my understandings on 30-page tracking, um, affecting migrations, and uh, the challenges that we are, uh, we are seeing. Firstly, I, I, I would like to say that uh, upstream KVM and actually QMU as well is evolving with more efficient migrations. Uh, I shared some of the examples. Firstly, there, uh, there is Gaotian's work uh, from Huawei on lazy red protect of huge pages when we enable uh, dirty tracking. Uh, that only works for in need, initial all set uh, when the clear dirty log is enabled, but it should be really the default that we use for dirty logging. Secondly, there is Ben's work and uh, I, I believe is a teamwork on the TDP MMU uh, solution, which is a huge change uh, and a new uh, the TDP MMU that uh, may replace the old, I think. Uh, which replaced the MMU uh, spin lock into a read-write lock, and it, lo it allows concurrent page faults, but of course it allows concurrent uh, dirty tracking as well, which is great. So I think it's a very important step towards uh, huge VMs, on either um, supporting uh, huge VMs and also especially on the migration side, which I will talk. Uh, I would like to talk later. Uh, the third thing is uh, KVM30 ring. Uh, it landed uh, in last year, uh, as mentioned, not only on Linux, but also in QMU. Uh, the QMU support is only an initial one because we, I think we need more work to finally uh, enable Dirty Ring as a whole feature. I think it's, uh, it's already working and uh, making sense, but uh, we need work, more works to do. Uh, generally, I think uh, KVM is evolving even more faster in the, la in the last year. So QMU should really catch up with it. And uh, I really think um, that a huge VM migration will be a very important topic to be discussed, uh, not only in the past year, but also in the next few years regarding migration. And so what is huge VM migrations? Uh, what is huge virtual machines? Uh, I see it uh, like it has more recipes, like more than 100. It has a lot of memories, like at least one TB. And in those cases, it means, it probably means uh, the user is very serious on using these virtual machines and uh, they really run some important workloads. So uh, it implicit requirement is also that there is some quality assurance uh, sometimes, even during migration. So they would like the workloads to perform not so bad even during migration. It's not a hard limit, but it, it happens uh, in some cases and uh, it happens even more in the huge vir virtual machine cases. Uh, that brings quite a lot of challenges here. Firstly, uh, it's about the scaling of uh, existing algorithms. Some of the algorithms may run well on the small virtual machines. However, they may not really run well on the huge virtual machines, and it could be a problem. The second one is uh, about uh, auto-converge. Convergence is always an issue, and uh, as we know, with more VCP power, with more memory, converge is even harder on huge virtual machines. Not to mention that people care even more on the workload and even more on even during migration, we don't they don't really want to stop their workload. So auto converge is probably and uh, uh, similar ideas on throttling may not really work uh, in some use cases. So people may like to have a strict, more strict requirement on migration. The third one is about huge TLBFS. That seems to be the de facto standard for huge virtual machines. 
it could be um, not required uh, for all of them, but it is growing. The users are getting much more. And uh, so I think we should handle well on huge TLBFS on every aspect. I tried to summarize all these challenges, um, not only uh, the ones that I mentioned, but at least the ones that I think are important uh, in the near future and uh, the solutions that may help. The first one is, of course, the not scaling algorithm issue. I think it's a long term effort, and uh, not only in uh, QMU, but also in KVM, and it's getting better. Uh, I think it's uh, really getting better. But still, we, we may need some more works to do. Uh, the second one is convergence. As we mentioned, convergence could be a very important factor for huge virtual machines. So probably, uh, as we don't have a chance to throttle those, even if we have a dirty ring to have a better granularity on throttling, maybe it won't work because even if we uh, throttle the work work threads, uh, it will affect uh, the performance inside of the guest. So post copy is probably required because that is uh, that is not uh, at least proactively stopping the guest from running. Uh, the the third issue is about data copy bottleneck. As the virtual machine gets bigger, the data copy will become a problem, and we do observe uh, some of the perf traces that we see a lot of time used in uh, send message and so on. In this case, we may want either MODI FD or uh, the zero copy sockets or even both so that we can make sure we can saturate the network when there is still a chance we have a very great network. There is also possible that uh, the network is really slow. So the bottleneck will be on the network side. Uh, that's another problem. But so far, we should really care about data copy bottleneck from the processor's point of view. The fourth issue uh, and the five issue are all about downtimes. Basically, downtime is not about throttling the guest, but to stop the guest. So there could be an issue when we stop the guest. So uh, because the workloads will be affected, and that is not good. Firstly, there is a downtime during uh, post-copy handling of page faults. As we mentioned, the huge TRBFS could be a very major factor in the future. And even for now, we need to think about it because huge TRBFS has a major latency on page fault handling for post-copy. There is one thing called a double map of huge TRBFS that can reduce page fault latency, but it, this is still an idea. It will allow the huge TRBFS to mega one gig pages to be mapped in smaller chunks. It means the page fault can be handled and the, the data can be sent faster. We don't really need to wait for one second to, uh, to fold a page anymore. Uh, after migration, we can, of course, still merge small pages into huge pages. Uh, previously, we did that as well for THP, but right now this is huge TRBFS. Uh, huge TRBFS, and it will work the same. The thing is, uh, this is still an idea and not available upstream, but it is discussed upstream in the MM uh, community. The fifth issue uh, is the downtime when we switch from pre-copy to post-copy. As we mentioned, post-copy is probably required, so the switching can cause downtime as well, just like the end, of, end, end phase of pre-copy. So one thing uh, we could consider using a uh, leverage uh, is the work from Google that uh, they introduced the, the user foot have the minor mode, uh, which allows the destination VM to run earlier on the stored pages. Uh, when I say stored pages, I, I, I don't really mean it's always the stored pages. I mean, for example, uh, what we do right now is we migrate the pages and each of the page we can migrate multiple times it means um, there will be some pages on destination, but not all of them will be the latest. Some of them are dirty again on the source. When we switch to post copy, we know, um, we probably don't know 
uh, which one is the latest. So what we do right now is we start the virtual machine before we copy all the bitmap and all the those information, because uh, those can take time. And uh, we we just run the destination virtual machine. Uh, we swipe the page table to make sure there is no page table installed, but we have the page cache installed. And uh, when we uh, access any page, we got a page fault. We ask the source whether it's new or not. Uh, if it's new, it's okay. Or if it's old, we send the page alongside so we can resolve the page fault on the destination. That is called a minor fault. Uh, it's um, one thing to mention is that uh, there, there will be no anonymous support, uh, but it will support shared memory and huge TFFS. So for huge uh, huge VM migrations, it could still be helpful, even if Qmu supports a lot of me uh, cases that is anonymous memory based, because for huge VMs, as long as huge TFFS is used, uh, minor fault it will be supported. And the Qmu is uh, may need uh, some new item ad advice, uh, Cisco, to zap page table, but keep the page uh, page caches. Uh, something like I'm advised the don't uh, remove, but we don't really want to remove the page. We want to remove the page uh, page table entries only, so that we can fold them in. Uh, we can trap uh, the page access later. So, so all these are just the wild ideas that I think may solve those problems, and that all of them are still discussable. Um, so it's more like a sharing of how I understand these problems. Uh, before I end the talk, I would like to share one example regarding uh, 30 page tracking on the not scaling issue, which is when we copy the bitmaps. We know we have a very common interface of the 30 bitmap uh, uh, to report 30 pages, and we have actually 30 bitmap in QMU and KVM. What we measured, finally, uh, is that we try to migrate a 3TB guest, which has a bitmap of 100 megabytes. Uh, and the synchronous of 30 pay bitmap took uh, 200 milliseconds. That's a huge lot, amount of money, uh, of um, time. And that is so large. I mean, um, KVM get dirty log is very fast, it just copies the bitmap with clear log, it's very fast. So a lot of time is spent on moving the bitmaps uh, in, in QMU. The reasons are we have three layers of bitmap in QMU, uh, so, uh, namely KVM slot, we have a RAM list bitmap, uh, and we have a migration bitmap. We move them. And the different devices could have standalone bitmap, bitmaps as well. KVM is not a device, but it's an accelerator, and it has its own 30-bitmap uh, for sure. We have the vhost device, which can have uh, its own bitmap, and the VFIO uh, as well. And we normally copy bitmaps using compare exchange, or say atomic uh, weapons for threat safety, which is good and very safe. But uh, the thing is, uh, firstly, we may consider merging and reducing bitmap layers and operations in QMU because there are a lot. And secondly, which I want to talk slightly more because it's easier, is uh, whether we can copy the bitmaps more efficiently. This come to, comes to the topic on whether we should uh, copy bitmap using the atomic operations. As we know, atomic operations are heavily used in 30 bitmap operations for threat safety, and actually on every single bitmap, not only 30 bitmap. And however, atomic operations are not so cheap because it needs to lock the memory bus. I did a quick measurement using exchange instruction, uh, of course, with the uh, memory bus locked. Uh, uh, versus the normal memory copy, which is uh, a move instruction, for example, and I measured it on, on my laptop. I did it uh, in two cases. The first case is when the data access, memory access is all cached in L1. How I do that is I just use a single value and I repeatedly compare exchange on this single value. 
to read it out. It is actually eight times slower than pure memory copy. I think that's a pure overhead of uh, memory lock, memory bus locking. And if if I try all cache me's in R3, it means I try to exchange a huge bitmap larger than R3 cache. It is actually only three times slower, but still it's three times slower. Uh, for more numbers, uh, we can reference to these. So I, I start to think maybe this is an accident. I should try it on more than one host. So I tried on the other one that I still have on a testing machine, which has a Zion CPU with E5. Uh, uh, so I tried on both of them and uh, I noticed that uh, there is some difference, but uh, the ratio is uh, very close to three times or even 3.5 on that testing machine. Uh, what I, what the, the test I did was uh, just try to copy the bitmap of uh, ATP me, uh, TB memory, uh, which is actually a 256 megabytes bitmap. The test uh, uh, test case can be found on the bottom of the link, uh, which is a very simple program itself. So, so it means maybe it's not efficient to copy using exchange for a huge bitmap. We don't need to lock the memory bus for so uh, for uh, so frequently, right? Um, so, um, what's the solution? Uh, so, I, I had a look at the KVM side first. I think KVM does not have such issue. Uh, most uh, mostly because with clear lock, we do copy to user bitmap, with without compare uh, exchange. So it's uh, it's uh, it's the efficient way that we should use. And when we reprotect, exchange is used. However, the overhead is probably buried uh, in page table works. What I mean is that uh, uh, firstly, uh, we can see the block B, which is get dirty process. Uh, I think we don't really need the exchange. So we can use normal memory copies, but it shouldn't really affect a lot because uh, we, we have extra overheads on uh, for example, write protecting page tables. Uh, so this change may or may not matter much, even if I'm right. Block C is uh, when clear dirty. It has a similar semantic. We used atomic, but uh, it's not really that important because even if we can speed up this atomic uh, instruction, uh, later on we need to rewrite re protect those uh, pages and uh, it won't show a huge effect. However, I think for Qmio, we really need to consider because Qmio, as I mentioned, Qmio has a lot of layers of bitmap. We have a lot of bitmap moving operations. We really need to rework on copying and merging bitmaps. So the solution is probably very similar to K KVM. We, we need to make sure that when we copy hu huge bitmap, it uh, needs to be without Atomic operations. And uh, how we do that? When, when set dirty, we can we can use a read-write lock plus atomics. So firstly, the atomics is used to uh, guarantee uh, threat safety for read concurrency. So when we set dirty, for example, a lot of VCPU threads, let's say imagine TCG running, and uh, they want to set dirty. We, uh, uh, each of them should take a read lock plus atomically set 30. That is okay because it only set one bit. But when we collect and copy 30 pages, we should really take the write lock to make sure there is no VCPU, uh, TCD stress, or any VCPU stress running to 38 again. As long as we have the write lock, we should be able to memory copy, uh, and that will avoid all races. And uh, by the way, read-write read lock uh, contains memory barriers by nature. So it's uh, it should be always the latest information. We don't need to worry about uh, when the 30 bit is set, but we uh, didn't collect it. But uh, this is an idea. I never tried to verify it. I need to verify it uh, later. Uh, okay, that is uh, all the things that I plan to share. Uh, all comments are greatly welcome. Thank you very much.